You know, for some reason yesterday, I started thinking about the Showtime 30-minute movie. You remember that? The Showtime 30-minute movie circa 1990, 91 on the Showtime cable channel, a series, kind of like an anthology series, but it was a series of short films. That, you know, that's one of the lost things about cable television in the, the late 80s and the early 90s is something that a, a lot of people don't remember is that it was filled cable television and even regular television, either regular like broadcast affiliates and things. It was filled with like short films, short films, short subjects, music videos, you know, night flight, you know, people talk about night flight and how that was so eclectic and everything. But there were a lot of programs that were like night flight. And then like, on even on Nickelodeon, you had Turkey Television, and you had all these programs kind of like that, that were kind of like showing these little comedy short films, these little short subjects, these little music videos, Barnes and Barnes, Fish Heads, little you know weird, strange little short films which which came out of out of nowhere. USA Network, of course, had Night Flight, but then they had all kinds of little short subjects that they would always intersperse between their their shows, especially on Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays m many times. Uh, there was, you know, all these little short films like uh, The Doll. Many people remember The Doll. I don't remember The Doll, but I remember the contraction, the, the contraction, the contraption about this guy who, who, who was making this machine, which is is really a kind of a, a mouse trap. I don't. I don't want to give it away. It's. It's kind of a. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a trap of some kind. It's a contraption, starring Richard O'Brien of um, of Rocky Horror fame. I. You know. I mean that that the contraption really uh, hit me. And then there was another. Um, I don't remember what it was called. I think it was called Panic or something. It was the show about this um, this little short film about this uh, woman late night who picks up a hitchhiker. It was one of those things. It was really a, a startling, a startling film. And uh, uh, very, very shocking for me when I was a young kid, I watched it on the USA Network late at night. And so, and then, you know, of course, in, in, in the late 80s and early 90s, you had like these little anthology series, like Tales from the Dark Side, the Ray Bradbury Theater, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Alfred Hitchcock presents the Hitcher, the Hitchhiker series. You know, you had these little thirty-minute, you know, things. Uh, these little thirty-minute shows, very frequently thirty to forty, you know, minute thing. But they were they were kind of short. You know, they were short. They were short. Um, all over television. You know, Tales from the Crypt, of course. You know, and Tales from the Dark Side and Monsters, and you know, these little thirty-minute little mini movies. And everything and television t these days has gone the exact opposite you know it's got to be you know it's basically these netflix shows they're they're like you know mini series you know they're like out you know they're like hour long shows and eight or eight of them or nine of them or ten of them and it's just like my god it's just it goes on for a very long time i'm i get very yeah i get very tired tired of those long every once in a while I can get a show like like Westworld that's good enough but even then it'll just go on and on it's like when is it gonna be over it's like you know and 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 maybe I'm missing maybe I'm missing a, a lot of good stuff but it just keeps going on and on and on you know, so I really love the era of the, 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 of the late 80s and the early 90s where, you know, you'd have this kind of bite-sized uh, entertainment. And, and, and the, uh, the ironic thing, or maybe not so ironic, but it might make sense <laughs> in a way, is that in the, in the late 80s and early 90s, the, um, the, uh, the, the, commercial, the, the commercial time between if you had, a sh if you had like USA Network, go back and, and do this. Go back and watch the USA Network. Uh, there's, you know, videotape shows of the USA Network, like Commander USA's Groovy Movies. Some you'll you'll actually see full length Commander USA with the commercials intact on on YouTube and elsewhere. What a daily motion, you know, where, you know, streaming sites. You'll see, you can watch, uh, you know, like a like a two hour 
programming block on USA Network, circa 87, 88, 89. And you'll find that the, the, the commercial times, very short, very, it's like, you know, they're padding out the commercial with public service announcements from like William Cat or whoever the hell. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really, really short. So there was a lot of program time there. And there was a lot of time to fill it with little slots, with little short subjects or music videos. I, I remember, you know, even into the mid nineties, USA Network was, was, music videos late at night Saturday you know and then of course you had also the music video shows like night night flight and then Friday night videos and and there were all these little local music videos shows so it was a very eclectic time and a very eclectic time and the and you, you could say today is it totally eclectic where anybody can put anything on YouTube and have millions of people watch it but uh, uh, it, it, it it seems like it's less eclectic at least on television you get these gigantic long series and so forth. Uh, so, so, uh, but back to the 30 minute movie, because the 30 minute movie was part of this. Uh, the 30 minute movie was a creation of this, uh, this company, Chanticleer Films, uh, Jonathan Sanger, producer of, um, many well-known movies like the, the Elephant Man and Vanilla Sky and, and many, many different films. Uh, he partnered with some people and made this uh, this this uh, Chanticleer films and the 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 big uh, product of Chanticleer films was this thing called the Discovery Program, which was basically this idea of giving young filmmakers, young talent, uh, the opportunity to make a uh, a thirty five millimeter film that they could use as a as a showcase for their talents. And uh, the, the Chant Chanticleer film started around 1986, 87. And by the late 80s, early 90s, they, they had the, the participation of the Showtime networks. And they, around 1990, 91, uh, they launched this series of films called the Showtime 30-Minute Movie. And it was shown on, on Showtime. And it was like a, it was like an anthology series. It was like an anthology series, like the Twilight Zone, like, like, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Twilight Zone, the Outer Limits, Monsters, Tales from the Dark Side. It was, it was like an anthology series, but unlike, uh, you know, all of those other things, it wasn't, it wasn't exclusively sci-fi and fantasy. In fact, you could think of it as like one of the few, it's not a really strictly anthology series, but one of the few kind of like anthology series-esque, anthology-esque series, uh, that, uh, I mean, this was just a showcase of, of, uh, disconnected movies, you know, it was a showcase, but it was one of the few series that, that was, was just totally just, you know, as far as the thematically and subject matter and the, the genre, it was just like all over the map, which was so great. You know, I mean, the only kind of common denominator between these shows is that the stories were usually really good. And it was, and it was like, you know, and it was, and it, and, it, and it is one of these. A lot of the short films were like kind of like think pieces, just like think things that make you go, huh, or interesting germs of an idea. I mean, the, I, the most well known uh, Showtime thirty minute movie is the one you see on YouTube all the time is Twelve Oh One. It's the Twelve Oh One starring Kurtwood Smith of RoboCop and that '70s show fame, and it was like a, it was like um, it was like it's like Groundhog Day. It's a guy in a, in, a, in a desk job, but he's in a time loop, and things get a little bit crazy. And toward the end, the guns come out, and he gets nuts, and and you know, but he's in a time loop, and um, and it was before, but it was before Groundhog Day. It was way, it was like a few years before Groundhog Day. It was 1990, 91. You know, Groundhog Day is what? Not, not, not 93, 94, 95. You know, it was, and and when Groundhog Day came out, you know, there was a lot of people like me who were going, "Whoa, that's that's like." That's 1201. They ripped off 1201, man. They ripped off 1201. And I mean, they remade, they even, I mean, it's a great film. I mean, Kurt Wood Smith is incredible in it. And they, they eventually remade 1201 as a, as a, as a TV movie, I believe a Fox TV movie with uh, Jonathan Silverman. And so many, anyway, if you think about 1201, you're like, well, no, Jonathan Silverman was in, that was a TV. Movie. Now there was a remake of the Kurt Wood Smith 1201. And then there was this movie, The Jogger. 
And and uh, that's another interesting one, uh, starring Terry O'Quinn. It's about this just jogger who's this really controlled guy. And he goes out for a jog in the morning, and uh, and then he begins to be chased by this mysterious figure. And it's one of those one of those kind of suspense type of surrealist type of you know who is this guy that's chasing him type of the thing. You know, it's a real it's a real kind of nail biter of of a movie. Those are the ones that I remember. But going back and, and, and just kind of just doing some basic research and you type in Showtime 30 minute movie and there's a lot of like Entertainment Weekly articles, you know, like this this week coming in, you know, in 1990, this week showing on Showtime is a 30 minute movie. And they'll show you they'll 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 run down all these other 30 minute movies. Apparently they were they they produced like about, you know. Uh, two dozen of these, almost two dozen, like 20 or 21, you know, Showtime 30 minute movies over the, over the years. And, uh, there's only a handful of these films that are available on, on YouTube. Really the jogger and 1201 is what's really posted, but there were all these, there was a, there was a movie, uh, I think it was called hearts of stone about two gang members. And there was a, a one called conquering space that, you know, and they had such great actors, you know, because because the, the idea is that this was about new talent, finding new talent. So the actors like Kurtwood Smith and Reuben Blades and 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 Terry O'Quinn. And so these great character actors are coming on and and doing little uh, doing little spots in the show for little or no money, just kind of donating their talent to to the to the show. And, and um you know, and these films kind of became a calling card for these, for these, for these writers and directors and things. And uh, but it's a shame that so many of those are just not available. You know, not available on YouTube or it, not available in a cursory search. You know, it, it's it's uh, there's so many of these. It really these are these are some really interesting films. It would be really interesting somehow to get a to get some kind of release of these of these movies, but. Who knows? Maybe that's not in the cards. You know, I think Shannon Claire Films tried to go into to making feature films, but then that that kind of that uh, because I think I think there was you you would actually submit your ideas to Shannon Claire Films somehow. It was like a like a competition there or a submission process which involved the submission fee. I don't know. I don't know the whole mechanics of it because I'm just reading articles from years back. But that's how they would find the, the the projects by by submissions from from uh, you know young filmmakers, student filmmakers. So it's an interesting thing, you know, uh, an interesting uh, kind of like a, a lost series of films in, in, in many ways. As I said there's a handful of them that kind of somehow exist, but there's a lot of them that's just kind of like you know they showed on Showtime, and and then that that's kind of. That's kind of it. So I, it would be wonderful if these, if these, if there was some kind of a, if there was some way to 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 bring back these the, these films. You know, it'd be wonderful. On behalf of the motion picture industry, welcome to the world of home video entertainment. 